Hi, my name is Nicole Kimmel and I'm a weed specialist with Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development and I'm going to talk to you today about weed scouting. Weed scouting is integral to any farm operation. In order to implement a weed control strategy, you need to know what weeds you're dealing with, where they're located and what stage they are at. It doesn't matter what time of the year that is, it's always the case. So you need to have some sort of idea of what weeds are present um, to make those immediate herbicide decisions, whether it's pre-seeding, post-seeding, seeding, pre-harvest, post-harvest, any of those times you need to know what weeds you're dealing with, so scouting is important. Uh, it develops a field history, so if you want to change a cropping uh, decision in the future based on weeds, you need to have that information readily available. And uh, it's a requirement for precision agriculture. So if you're using any sort of GPS technology, you'll want to have those weeds mapped out through a GPS as well. The weed scouting program that you choose actually needs to uh, balance the amount of people that you have in your operation, the time you have available to commit to weed scouting, and how accurate you're hoping your results will be. Are you looking for specific numbers or just categories of weeds? If there's a few, some, or none. So you have to take all those uh, inputs into consideration before you actually make your plan. And that can only be decided by your operation. Before you begin your weed scouting program, you need some tools in your toolbox before you get started. You need some good reference books. These two are available from Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development and they're excellent resources because they both have seedling pictures. This is ideally where we're IDing our weeds, is at the seedling stage, but they do have the other stages when needed. And then this little guide here, pocket guide, fits on your dash or in your pocket, um, just has the seedlings of the most common weeds found in fields in Alberta, which is very helpful. So these are two good resources to have. You might not know it right off the top of your head and you might have to do some investigation to look and compare with those photos. So this is my shovel, also uh, a knife on the other sides, does double duty for me, but you actually need to uproot some, some weeds to identify them. So be sure to have a shovel. It also makes uh, collecting weeds a little bit easier. Sometimes you just want to cut them off, so a good pair of cutters will help you take it back so you can do the weed ID in the comforts of your home. Uh, if you don't have a knife, you might also need a knife to cut open something and have a closer look. Hand lens. Now, most people don't have these, but uh, they're fairly inexpensive, about 20, 30 bucks, and it actually magnifies things. So you can actually see hairs and seeds up close and that might help you identify a plant or a weed. If you're still stumped, even after that, you may have to submit a sample. So you may need to collect some sample for a lab to actually go through and do the weed ID for you. And for that, you usually need either a paper bag for really wet conditions or a plastic bag for really dry conditions. You want to hold those moisture in on dry days. Plants, when they're cut, dry up fairly fast. So on a dry day, I would use a wet bag, but also with moisture comes mold. So you need to balance which, which one you want to use. And you want to prepare that specimen fairly quickly for the lab and send it off. Another tool of the trade is a GPS unit or a camera. And thankfully, sometimes these come both in a, a smartphone, which is uh, fairly easy to use for most people and they have it there already with them for their phones. So a GPS and a camera is also a, a bonus to have in your weed scouting program. Now for your timing of your weed scout program, unfortunately you have to do it all season long. So if you have no previous uh, knowledge of a field, this field is new to you, you need to be more systematic in your weed scouting program. You're actually going to work a W pattern, um, stopping at five spots on each leg of that W. So you'll have 20 in total. 
and that's how you begin to get a lay of the field in regards to weeds. But usually you're in the situation where you have some sort of field history on this, on this field, so you don't need to do that W systematic uh, weed scout every year. So with a little bit of history, you can concentrate on areas that are most likely to have a little bit more weed infestation. So those low yielding areas, uh, fence lines, water line areas, and maybe even the high areas on hills would also be areas to concentrate and looking for new weed infestations. Uh, next, we're gonna cover things to record while you're weed scouting. It's important to note the date that you're scouting so that you kind of can build that field history along uh, months of the season. Location, the GPS, or uh, you can pull out a field map and just draw a diagram, that is also useful. But GPS is usually kind of the more acceptable way to do things nowadays. And of course, uh, the weed species. You wanna record every weed species that you come across. And it's important to know what weed species you're dealing with, whether it's annual, biennial, or perennial. Annuals are fairly easy to control, if easy is a e uh, word that you want to use for weeds, usually not, but in, in the big scheme of things, they're fairly easy. Um, you need to actually promote germination in the spring, and then you can either use herbicide tillage to actually control them, and then you're probably good for the season, unless there's some late rains. Biennials, you have two opportunities to control them, either early spring or late fall, because they only take two years to actually mature to flowering and seed production. And perennials, you have to deal with the plant itself, uh, targeting the root system so it can't overwinter, as well as the seed production it's doing that year. You need to establish some sort of system of recording the abundance, whether it's gonna be a subjective few, some, lots, or a qualitative where you're actually throwing out a frame, either, I don't know, a half square meter or yard, whatever you have, a ruler even, uh, and then counting the weeds in that area and documenting an actual number. You need to take notice of both the crop stage and the weed stage because all herbicides are based on those stages and it's important to adhere to them. They do a lot of research in establishing those stages, so it's important to stay within them. You need to take notice of the environmental stresses as well when you're doing your weed scouting program. Conditions like drought or flooding will also affect how effective a herbicide or a tillage control measure will be. So take notice, uh, make sure you record that uh, observation on a record sheet so that you can use it for future decisions. So just to recap how important weed scouting is, it is the starting point of all your decision making for your operation. And it just doesn't stop at weeds. While you're doing a weed walk, you should also be looking for insects, diseases as well. And anything that you can do quick on a small scale and take care of it quickly saves you that big expense when you let things get out of control, whether it be weeds, diseases, or insects. Be sure to check back with Alberta Agriculture and Rural Development's website we update often and we have information on all the pests that you may encounter, whether it be weeds, diseases or insects.